Hello, I'm Theolyn Cortens. Welcome to Soul School and welcome especially to Signs and Wonders. In this series of Signs and Wonders videos, I'm covering eight archangels associated with the Sephiroth on the Tree of Life, in particular the lower section of the Tree of Life. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to experience them as basic qualities, archetypal qualities, that you can introduce into your life consciously. Because by adopting those qualities and attempting, at least, to live up to the highest possibility of those different qualities, you start developing a more balanced approach to your spiritual life and that in turn has an effect on your material life on your outer life because the outer is always a reflection of the inner so we've covered Sandalphon and Oriel we've talked about Gabriel we've talked about Raphael so there have been four in this series so far and if you haven't seen those I suggest you go back to them because working through those in a sequence could be really valuable it's like a mini course in its own right. Now every time I introduce another archangel I use my book which is called Working with Archangels and I quote a little poem because for every chapter, every archangel, I found a piece of poetry that I thought reflected the archetypal quality of the archangel. So this is a piece of Shakespeare. One of my favourite pieces of Shakespeare, actually, I have to say. O oh God of Battles! Steal my soldiers' hearts, possess them not with fear. Take from them now the sense of reckoning. Ere the opposed numbers pluck their hearts from them. Now that speech is from Henry V. So this is the English king going into battle against the French before the Battle of Agincourt. I think it's Agincourt, but there's another battle called Harfleur. So it was one of those battles anyway. And he is asking the god of battles to steal his soldiers' hearts, make them so firm, tempered steel, and to take away the reckoning of the opposed numbers to take away the idea that the French, who outnumber them considerably in that battle, um, will overcome them because of their numbers. He wants God to allow the soldiers to forget that there are many, many other soldiers ranked against them. And then, of course, if they allow those numbers to just be in their minds all the time, they won't be able to fight. They will just collapse under the weight of thinking, we can't win this, we can't win this because, because there's so many things stacked against us. So this is a really good few lines of Shakespearean speech that can really help us understand the Archangel Haniel. And the Archangel Haniel resides, is the guardian for the gate of light at the Sephira called Victory on the active side of the Tree of Life. Now, I mentioned before that some people associate Haniel with Venus, put Venus here, but I don't think that works at all with victory. I think Haniel is to do with Mars. And Haniel's name is usually translated the glory of God. 
So the glory of God and victory seems to me very much a warrior archetype. And to be the god of battles, stealing the soldiers' hearts, is totally appropriate for Haniel energy. So Haniel, as a warrior, is going into battle. Going into battle against the odds. And this is something that happens for many of us at a psycho-spiritual level, that we know that certain um, aspects of life can feel like a vast array of an army ranked against us. You know, there's some unsurmountable obstacles between what we desire as a growing soul and what is possible. And of course, some of the great heroes and heroines of history are people who go against the odds. They say, nothing's going to stop me, I have to go. And they are the ones who steal their hearts and close off the counting. They, they're not even going to look at the problems that may lie ahead, because if they do, that will overwhelm them. And this is a kind of motif that we find in the heroic um, uh, battle where one person, somebody perhaps very small and insignificant, like David in the biblical story, who has to measure up against Goliath and the Philistines. So Goliath is not just a giant, but he's got the Philistine army behind him as well. So this is extremely potent stuff. And we see the success of that attitude in the Second World War where Winston Churchill is basically saying, you know, don't look at the odds stacked against us, which were vast. Just look at the sense of soul purpose. If your soul is engaged with what is true and correct, and some people would use the word righteous, and righteous here doesn't mean you know, being right because the other person's wrong. It means being true to something which is the correct purpose for you personally. That you have to do this. You have to go on this mission. And in some senses, you have to carve your way through anything that opposes you. And for most of us in everyday life, what will oppose us will be other people's opinions. You know, it's not people with actual swords. It's people with carping kind of uh, criticisms or negative attitudes. That's what we have to carve through. That's what we have to steal our soldiers' hearts against. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to do in this life. And you can say what you like, but don't rain on my parade. You know, I'm going to do what I have to do. And if you don't like it, then, you know, you can fall by the wayside. I'm carving my way through. And you may or may not, depending on your disposition, see that as a battlefield. I have to admit here that I'm an Aries person. And I can sometimes see it like a battle. Um, and that perhaps is why the Shakespearean speech um, echoes so well for me. But coming back to Haniel as an archangel that you could work with, whatever sign of the zodiac is um, in your chart, it is nonetheless a basic archetype of succeeding quite often against the odds, having the constancy and the focus to take charge of what you've got in the way of resources and making the most of them in this life and not being afraid, not being um, uh, taken 
into something small because you some, think something big is stacked against you. Because what is stacked against you is for the most part invisible. And it might not all be against you. It might be for you. It might be that you can weave your way through what appear to be um, ranks of soldiers or, you know, cavalrymen or archers, whatever they were in those times. But you can duck and weave through that and still get to the citadel, they would have called it, still get to the to the uh, palace or the or the castle that you wish to conquer because you want to move into a new way of doing things that would be your castle and in order to do that you know you may have to unpick various habitual ways of doing things those would be the soldiers stacked against you you may have to reorganize all kinds of ways of thinking and doing in the world so that the results that you achieve are different from the ones that you've got right here and now. That was what King Henry wanted to do. King Henry had the crown of England that was very safe. He wanted the king of he wanted to get the, the crown of France as well. So he was moving up the ladder, he was breaking through a glass ceiling, he was moving up and expanding his empire. So we want to expand our empire in a sense of expanding our sense of soul self as being something that we can take pride in and be a successful monarch, king or queen, whatever, when we achieve something that feels as though we've arrived at some sense of soul satisfaction. So this is all about getting to work with your soul's purpose. And Haniel sits on the active masculine side of the tree of life and counterbalances Raphael. But they are, like Sandalf and Oriol, they are complementary to each other. And I often talk to people who are healers who work with Raphael. Don't forget that Haniel can be very helpful in the healing process. If somebody is suffering from depression or one of those debilitating, um, on, ongoing, long, extended uh, processes of, 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 of low energy when they can't do anything because of some almost unknown and invisible um, sense of being withdrawn or debilitated in life, deep depression, bring Haniel into the healing mix as well as Raphael. Haniel gives a bit of oomph to the situation, gives a bit of get up and go, vitality. Haniel is to do with blood pumping round the body. It's the élan vital, the life spirit, the power that makes things grow and change. That's why I associate Haniel with Mars. Mars isn't just a warrior, not just a god of war or battles. Mars was also the god of agriculture. He gave his name to the month of March, when the spring comes and new life begins. So this is about our basic vitality. The vitality that we engage with when we want to conquer, when we want to be a hero or heroine, and fulfil our life's purpose in the face of potential difficulties. It's very much a companion for the hero's journey.
So find out more about Haniel by reading my book, Working with Archangels, or go to the channel of messages in the Angel Script. Even better, enroll on my course, Accessing Angelic Realms. I will be so delighted to mentor and supervise you through the journey with the Archangels. Keep shining. Many blessings. And I'll be back shortly with the great Panjandrum, the Commander-in-Chief of all Archangels, Michael. See you soon. <laughs>